Oh, I think that countdown is wrong. All right, we're just going straight into it then. All right, and we are live. Hello and welcome to Developer Insights. I am David. And I'm Justin. And together we are the leads on game development and design here at Codename. Not only that, but we founded the company. So we've got that going for us too. You need to say that with a little more... No, anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll be your host for this episode and every episode. Unless we are not. Correct. Today is our fifth episode. Five episodes. Well, hopefully it's not our last. Why would it be our last? Well, as I said, every time before we could get canceled. Uh, why would we get canceled? Well, they might run out of questions. Well, that's fine. I just do my one man reenactment of Star Wars A New Hope. I know we keep joking about that, but nobody wants to see that. No, no, no. People have been clamoring for that, I'm sure. Well, they, they should be careful what they're wishing for. <laughs> Let's just move on. Right. The best. <laughs> so we are here to answer your development and design questions, specifically on Idle Champions. But if you ask us about some of our other games, we might answer those as well. Oh, the chat is clamoring for Star Wars, Justin. I don't know. Maybe uh... that'll have to be a special stream during Extra Life. <laughs> right. Um, oh, well, if they go with uh, that Star Wars, maybe you can give them Star Wars The Last Jedi this time. No, I don't really remember much of Star Wars The Last Jedi, aside from extreme feelings of disappointment. Yeah, I think anyway. you came over with a headache after that. <laughs> I did not enjoy it. Uh, we've decided to actually ditch the updates section um, in this stream because we haven't had updates for like three weeks. Uh, and the changelog and community posts seem to cover pretty much everything that's going on in the game. So check out the changelog in game, check out our Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook feeds, all that social stuff for all the important updates in the game. You know, I saw a question going through the doc from last time that said that the changelog on the Discord hadn't been updated in a month. That does sound like something that might have been broken by uh, some of the data changes that we did for localization. Okay. So we should probably check that, uh, you know, before we say you don't get any updates here. Uh, In the in-game change log. That's right. All we'll, your updates. We'll reserve this until updates actually show up. Um, anyway, uh, instead of that for now, we've pulled some questions from last week's show that we didn't get to, and we will answer some of those while we wait for new questions to come in. Yeah, uh, I've got one here for you that came in last week from Yilmaz Dermaz, who asked, is there any work towards fixing progress stopping uh, bugs in Modron cores? I said everything fine, and after 12 hours, for example, there's almost zero offline progress canceled or calculated, while it's been at least five to four, or four to five resets uh, available in that time. Right, right. And so I do think this question, or at least one very similar to it, was asked and answered last week. But uh, it is something that bears repeating because I know it's a question that's uh, that's going to come up. Uh, it's going to come up until we fix those pieces. And the answer on that one is that um, it is on the top of Peter's list of things to get uh, taken care of as soon as there's additional bug time. Um, and I know that will be coming up soon because I know we've got a new feature that is approaching completion, which means that dev time will be freeing up to work towards that. All right, um, and what else we got here from last week? We got a question here from Aquatic Demon One, and they're asking. Obviously, there are champions people like more than others, but there are a few champions that people downright dislike. <laughs> they strongly dislike. Is this an intent, um, or will there be a fix to make every champion appealing uh, to make the choice of party comp harder because everyone is viable? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we don't uh, intentionally make champions that players hate. That is, uh, that's not our goal with any <laughs> champions. Um, we also don't intentionally make champions that are, that are super unviable. Um, that tends to happen um, actually not because champions are super unviable, but because uh, su uh, ch some champions are accidentally super good. Um, and so what happens <laughs> is we kind of try and balance one everyone the same. And then we put out like a Kroll or we put out an uh, Orkira and uh, they're just so much better than everyone else that it makes everyone else look bad. So no, we don't intentionally make bad champions. Ideally, we would love to bring everyone to the same level so that um, it's, uh, it's a more balanced playing field and everyone's viable in, in their right situation. Um, and that would be a, a great thing to do. It's very, 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 very hard though. So we will take steps towards that, but uh, 
who knows if we'll ever actually get there. It might be a bit of a pipe dream, but we'll try. Right. Cool. Um, before we move on to the next one, I just wanted to follow up on a question that was asked last week about mm -hmm. uh, the full screen borderless mode. Um, and so I, as I said last week, I thought, well, that's certainly the mode that it is in full screen. Um, and it, it turns out um, that I missed in the chat, people were saying that there were some caveats with that. And that is that if you went to a, if you had a full screen mode and you or full screen in full screen mode, I guess it's only got one full screen mode and it actually is borderless mode. Um, but if you click on another, uh, anything else in another window uh, on your other monitor, it actually minimizes the, uh, minimizes the damn thing. Uh, and as it turns out, I did a little digging into that, that is actually a unity behavior, but there is a flag um, that we can set on that. Um, and I believe it was visible in background was the name of the flag, which really doesn't sound like it should do um, what you think it would, which is that when you click on another <laughs> window, it leaves it up. Um, but we have that flag for our next build. So hopefully that solves that and that you can have the game full screen on a monitor and clicking onto your other monitor to do some work or whatever you're doing doesn't uh, immediately minimize it. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, we've got one more question from last week here that looks like we've highlighted. Uh, it's from Mistress Elemental, and they say, I want to use scientific notation to learn it, but it does not seem to translate to the patron, uh, patrons and the shop slash perk cost. So I get, get, get very confused on how much of my currency or influence will be needed. Is this intended or a bug? Um... So yeah, so this is kind of an interesting one because this was, <laughs> this is actually intended and it is something that we changed after um, players were uh, reporting that there's certain values in the shop and that's like in the thousand to 10,000 range um, that actually are confusing when they're in scientific notation. And it's, it reads more clearly and more consistency, consistently if it's all um, just sort of normal notation. Uh, no M's, no scientific, uh, just regular numbers. And so we set all of the sort of purchase cost items uh, in the shop and in the patron store uh, that are under 10,000, or maybe it's up to 99,000. It's in that it's in that range. Um, and they're on purposely like that, set yeah. uh, to just show uh, without any special notation on them. Uh, so that is why that is like that. That is cool. True. So I think that covers last week's questions that we pulled mm -hmm. forward. Um, and we've got a growing list of new ones here. So what do you want to start with? Justin, question ah, two. You can just go ahead and ask them in order. Well, yeah. you're, just, you're just highlighting the whole doc here. You're claiming yeah. the whole thing. Although this Bring question here actually sounds like one for me, but we'll let you go for it. Uh, you know what? We, uh, let, me, let me just change the highlight no. on this. Too it's perfect. too late. It's yours there now. <laughs> So there's a question here from the real bunny beast and uh, they're asking if you were to create idle champions from scratch today would you make any different choices regarding tech and frameworks so why don't you go ahead justin and give me what you were going to thinking of answering for this and then i can follow up if, if i'm perfectly honest i didn't actually read the last bit of it <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I was going to speak to what I would change um, with design, um, <laughs> but you know what? I'll I will still do that. I will just pretend that the real bunny beast is very interested in my opinions on design, and uh, and I yes, I can see you highlighting it. I know I, I can read now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, design wise, I'm I'm pretty happy with how Idle Champions came together. I think I would do um, Modron stuff a little bit earlier and a little bit more core into the game, um, specifically the multi party stuff. Um, I think I would also probably take a different approach to um, health and tanking, <laughs> like a third or third attempt at it, because um, we actually changed tanking and health in a, uh, in a in a rather infamous update, the shielding, uh, healing, and tanking uh, update uh, acronym, as you will. And um, <laughs> and uh, we, we took another stab at trying to get that right, and I, I still don't think it's quite right. It doesn't quite feel good. It's there's there's tons of um, kind of issues with it, and and certain heroes that just don't work super well within that meta or within the intended meta. They work outside the meta. So I, I think those are probably the two the two big things I would do differently if we were to create a brand new uh, idle game from from scratch today. But uh, yeah, I think I think the much more interesting part of this question is what would we do differently uh, with tech and frameworks? What do you think, Dave? Yeah, you know that is a, a that's a that's a good question, and I'm sort of racking my brain for what changes we would have made there. Um, 
the game for most platforms is is Unity, and Unity is actually really a great platform because it lets us build out um, to all of the different. Uh, well, I'm use the word platform again, but all of the different platforms. So, I mean, it, it has build support for Xbox and for PlayStation and for PC and for Mac and for iPhone and for Android and for uh, Nintendo Switch. Like all of those build choices make means that. Um, it really does make our job easier for not having to do multiple versions of the game for different platforms. And so I certainly wouldn't move away from Unity. Um, the WebGL version, for example, the web one, we had to write that as a separate, that was a completely separate project where we translated it from, from uh, C Sharp and Unity to WebGL. And if we had had to do that for the other platforms, uh, certainly we wouldn't have had, um, we just wouldn't have had the developer time to, to make that happen. Um, so I, I certainly wouldn't move away from Unity. Um, I, I think, Really, this, there's, there's some framework changes that we might consider. Um, I mean, the, the, the game in, in Unity is actually built on our own uh, homegrown 2D engine that we started building back before Unity even had really, uh, well, early on, Unity only had very rudimentary 2D support because Unity primarily is a 3D platform. And they've been adding some better stuff in there. Um, but it's not something that we've had a lot of time to spend to dig into details on and of course our framework is is built quite strongly into our uh, our art pipeline um so uh, i certainly would would want to actually make some improvements to that framework uh if we were starting again um but yeah, nothing off the top of my head as far as like uh, you know there's an existing like 2d game platform that i would jump on um i think that's one of those things where there's not actually a whole lot of uh, 2d game platforms um, that are that are super viable, especially one that can build out to um, to all those platforms the way Unity can. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think if we were starting again, we'd probably be looking at more sort of what we'd learn doing this this one, all the things you learned that you didn't think you needed to have in place, and have those in place in advance, and that would actually end up with uh, with a cleaner code base, uh, which I which would I think people would appreciate all around, um, not just the developers, but also the users who end up uh, with bugs that end up related to that. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'll keep thinking on that. Maybe I'll come back next time with an answer that's like, hey, actually, this other thing would have been cool to have. But uh, yeah, Unity gives us a lot. Do you think there's anything we would do differently um, based on like some of the platforms we eventually pushed out to? Like, um, I know we've talked on here previously about how sort of uh, mobile and uh, and Switch are kind of like two uh, opposite ends of the spectrum, where on mobile you have um, plenty of um, plenty of processing power, but no memory. And so you have to really compress your graphics down really high. Specifically not mobile, but Apple. Apple, mobile. yes, yeah. sorry. <laughs> uh, and then on Switch, you've got uh, tons of memory to work with, but no processing power, essentially. Um, is there anything you think you would do differently um, with, with the tech or framework or anything like that if you knew that kind of restriction was coming down the pipe? I, I think the answer is on, on considering how much development time we have, the answer would be no, because I think the trade-off would be um, we could do a, a specific platform for mobile that's more optimized for that, and a specific platform for like building specifically for Switch, with which doesn't go through Unity, um, would would give us some advantages there. But I think we'd be mm -hmm. in that camp where we, or in that that situation where we were having different code for different platforms, and we'd have to handle that ourselves. And so we would lose that that leverage from from the Unity, and it would mean we'd end up with we'd end up needing multiple extra developers for each platform, and and. Uh, so I don't. I think that disadvantage would would not um, would be too much of a trade off. That'd be my thought for that. That's fair. Yeah. And, and you think we're ever going to do a VR version? I know Eric would love a VR version. <laughs> top, top of list. Um, it's the future, man. Don't you don't need to tell me. I've got more headsets <laughs> than I. Uh, uh, more headsets than you have heads. That for sure. Yeah, well, I got those little plastic heads that I can put them on for display. Cool. All right. Well, let's move on to the next question. Um, I'm really disappointed. I actually didn't get the Deadpool head. Anyway, um, uh, Hollow Leviathan asks: Once Modron is out of beta, is there a plan to give a small, simple core, a small and or simple core to starting players? The beginning of play feels much like a mad dash to split the party to get a final automation, or to finally get yeah. automation. So I, I, I put this question because I was actually going through last week's questions and, uh, and saw something very similar um, where people are kind of thinking that uh, 
and, and potentially rightly so, the game gets much more interesting once you get uh, motor and automation and, uh, and multi-party and that sort of stuff. And I think that's definitely something that we're, we're probably going to be thinking about. Um, we've also recently with like the Epic promo, we've kind of seen how players um, do in the game when they can given a little bit more of a boost at the beginning of the game. And it does make me think that there's probably some stuff we can do at the start of the game to make it more interesting for new players now that there's a lot more depth in the game. Like obviously back when the game came out three years ago, four, almost four years ago, um, there just wasn't that much, there wasn't as much depth to the game. And so we needed to kind of uh, slow players down a little bit and, and not let them rush through uh, you know, the four adventures that we had when we launched the game uh, compared to now where we've got dozens and dozens of adventures and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the events and um, variants and patrons and all that stuff. And so I think that's, that's definitely something we can probably look at is how can we accelerate that initial flow and get players really into, um, into the, fun, the, the more fun parts of the game a, a little bit faster. So I think that's a really good question. I think that's something that we're we're definitely going to be thinking about in the um, in the coming months as we as we start to think past the uh, past the feature, the big feature that we're working on right now. So yeah, really good question. Uh, let's see here, Dave. You've been going through and I'm just filling in the rest of the questions here. We'll just <laughs> yeah, just take the rest of them. Congratulations, everyone. We're going to get through all the questions today. Um, now that I say that, the people who don't get their question answered are going to be really... Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got one here that is highlighted in um, blue, which is Dave's color. Uh, and it is from... Oh, here's a... Uh, Exurgency, let's say. Uh, and they ask, is the Unity Game Manager access something done on purpose? Oh, I actually don't know what this is asking about. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm taking a guess here, and maybe this player can fill in more details if I get the guess wrong. Um, and I think the Unity Game Manager, what they're actually asking about is there's a debug screen that you can bring up if you uh, cir hold down the mouse button and circle three times. And it's just a debug log um, that we left in so that if we had to ask for uh, some debug information from someone who had the live game up, that they could uh, take a copy or a print screen of that and send it to us. Um, so if that's what if that's the, what you're talking about when you say Unity Game Manager, um, yeah, they then, said that's the one in yeah. chat. Yeah. yeah, it's actually a third-party tool. It's not a Unity thing at all. It's a thing called Report. Oh crap! I'm gonna remember the name of it. Um, but it was a it was additional debugging log tool um, that we added. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it, it's pretty. I use it uh, pretty often on Dev when there's an exception. Uh, nine times out of ten, it'll get printed in there, and I can <laughs> <laughs> look it up and go, hey. You fix this. Yeah, no, I mean, and uh, we left it in the live build in case we're helping a player with something and they had to report something to support. Yeah. Cool. Though so to be fair, on I think on live, most exceptions uh, just automatically get reported to us um, through the back end. Yeah. Most uh, of the time. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> they pop out there. I don't actually know why they pop up there versus getting automatically reported or not. I, I'd have to see a specific situation to know, but yeah. Cool. All right. Um, Let's go to question six. The question sure. is, will you change the max number of bounties that you can open at the same time? This question is asked by Moro Racing DOS. Moro Racing DOS? Uh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think uh, this, is a, this is a question we get very often. Uh, I think it's pretty much every single, every single Q&A, every single Reddit Q&A, every single stream we get, we get this question. and. Uh, I, I think we can probably do this, don't you, Dave? Like, change doesn't the that seem like something that'd be pretty simple to do? Um, I think so. I think that, like, uh, I guess one thing to talk about is one of the one of the reasons that this is in place is because we um, we don't want players to regret their actions in game, and uh, <laughs> and one of the ways that we do that is by making it hard for you to do things that we think might not be a good idea. Um, and so uh, we limit the number of bounties you can use at the same time because we don't want you to necessarily use all your bounties in one go and then be like, oh, I wanted to actually save some of those for later. Um, so that's one of the reasons that we make it a little bit harder. It with that said, the game down. it does also create a whole bunch of goobers, but that's something that we can deal with and that's totally in our, in our court. Um, I think that's mainly a, a concern for things like epic and, and rare bounties, the ones that are a little less common. Uh, and so I think for uncommon bounties, um, 
or or for even the I think in um, in the Electrum chest you can get even the common bounties. I think that's something we can definitely look at maybe increasing on those two uh, because yeah, uh, it's definitely 10, 10 at a time when you only get five minutes of progress or tokens. It definitely takes a very long time to uh, to get through them all if you've got a lot. So, yeah, I think so. I all will right, I will right. run that past the team. Flag it. It's flagged. Cool. Uh, yeah. Do you want to do another one for me? Well, I was going to say, looking up, should answer this question five. It looks like a... Do you want to do, you wanna do no, this no, one? No, no, I'll give this... that to you. I know you love this question. Oh, I mean, <laughs> this is kind of more of a all I right, mean, more of a. I thought this was more of a that. design question. So this okay. So before we go back and forth though, telling people what the <laughs> question is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Spookabic asks: Is there any chance that a pause button could get added to the game? Because um, saying it's hard to move their champions around later in game when it starts to slow down their computer. Oh my! Um, but the actual game pausing was one of those questions that uh, I know we went back and forth on quite a bit during the design. I know initially. Um, the idea that it's an idle game and you should it should never pause um i'm not 100 percent sure where that particular design paradigm had originally or had originated originated from um <clears throat> i know when we bring up certain screens we do pause the game temporarily um mm -hmm. but I think, uh, I think this is actually this actually might the, the answer to this one might actually be down a similar vein to the uh to the previous one um because one thing like when you bring up the shop or the chess screen, I think the game does pause uh, for a little bit, uh, but it does unpause after about five minutes uh, automatically. And the reason for that is because one of the things we want to do is stop players from doing things that they might regret. And one of the things that a player might regret is pausing the game and then getting up and walking away and then coming back hours and hours later and expecting to have progress and not having any progress. And uh, I think the reason that we avoided having the game pause when dialogues were brought up for very long um, was specifically was specifically for that reason. Like I know this this actually goes all the way back to Crusaders: The Lost Idols, where um, initially it didn't pause at all when you brought up dialogues, and players were complaining were 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 complaining about that because they would. Um, bring up a, like a, the chess dialogue or the shop dialogue or whatever and, and poke around in there and then come back and their guys would have like died or be like levels ahead and they would have missed some stuff and, and uh, they didn't want to miss stuff. And so we added the pause in there, but then at the same time, we didn't necessarily want them to just like if they open up a dialogue and then go away to lose out on hours and hours of progress. So I think the sort of where we met halfway was to have the game pause when you bring up those dialogues, but then unpause after <clears throat> five or 10 minutes. And so I think we just kind of pulled that over into Idle Champions without really thinking about it very much because it seemed to have worked pretty well in, um, uh, in Crusaders. With that said, um, the idea of being able to move your champions around um, and when it starts to get really slow on your computer, I mean, that's certainly a different situation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if, if even if we did add a pause button to the game, it would have to come with that kind of auto unpause after a certain amount of time, which which could very well be a, a good compromise. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Dave? Yeah, um, I, it certainly would have to come with that because I think we wouldn't want to end up with people in a situation where they'd left it paused um, accidentally. Um, but I actually, I got to thinking about the rest of this question, which says that uh, it gets hard to move the champions later in the game when it starts to slow down. I wonder if that's, you know, if there are monsters attacking at that time. And one thing to be aware of, of course, is that once you are once you are under attack, you, any champion flagged as being under attack, which means ones that have um, a mon like a melee monster next to them or an, uh, a ranged monster that has targeted them, uh, you can't move them at that point. Um, and mm. so that could actually also be a, a, a consideration. Um, so it should, the game shouldn't actually be any slower later in the game um, but it sounds like if you're saying sl slowing down, that probably means there's a bunch of monsters attacking, like if they're starting to build up. And at that point, it's actually difficult to move your formation around anyway, because champions who are flagged as in combat uh, can't be moved. Uh, so that could be part of that. I think in general, what players do is, is you know, go back a couple areas <laughs> where, they're, where they're having no difficulty and, and change it around there. Um, mm -hmm. Because, yeah, so bear in mind, you can't, you can't change your formation um, very easily when you're under attack. Cool. All right. Shall we move to question seven? We got one here from sure. General Garowar. 
general. What are your thoughts in the current super end game strat of Briv Human Gym uh, to jump to 1500 plus? Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, it's definitely something that we, we hear about a bunch. Um, it's not something that we really intend. Um, and it is something that we are, we are considering ways to, to address. Um, some of the ways we're thinking about addressing it, um, not letting Briv jump to an area you haven't beaten before. Um, so for example, if you go into a, an adventure or a campaign or whatever, and you've only ever gotten to area 100, then uh, when Briv's in like area 99 or however many areas back he needs to be for uh, whatever his uh, equipment has him jumping to, he wouldn't be able to actually jump past that point. Um, so you wouldn't be able to push uh, over top of bosses or, or other things um, using Briv. Uh, another thing we've been talking about is adjusting gyms um, uh, transformation is wand of wonder so that you can't necessarily wand of wonder things in areas where you just stand no chance of killing anything um i think that would probably <laughs> probably solve the problem of being able to just very 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 slowly get through places and then of course human um is a big part of this combination because he can essentially re you know reduce the number of enemies you have to kill down to one um so I think if we were going to if we're going to nerf this kind of thing, it's probably going to be more in in Briv and Jim, probably probably more in Jim to be honest, um, and and rather than Human or uh, or nerfing Briv in a in a really big way for just normal gameplay. So, yeah, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I'm not a fan of players uh, uh, jump into 1500 in a very I mean it's it's not that I'm not a fan of players finding unique ways to get to 1500 it's just that way is just so slow and annoying and uh, it's it's definitely not a fun way to play the game and so I, I don't really like non-fun ways to <laughs> to, uh, to game the game because they're just not fun we want players to have fun it's the reason you're playing a game uh, let's see another question here for you, Dave. Uh, here's one from uh, Ironuck. Uh, it says, question. Would it be possible to allow the main window to be resized beyond picking resolutions? I have to create a custom screen mode just to fit all 12 bench slots on my screen without ruining the scaling of the 1080p artworks. Artworks. Well, there's an extra R in there. <laughs> there pirate works. Yar. Well, I tagged that one because we keep getting this question, or we keep getting questions in this similar vein. So I'm just going to start making a note of this particular one and see how much request there is for this. This this does require some thought. Um, we certainly don't want to allow um, the re just like complete random resizing of the game, um, yes. especially beyond certain levels. Um, but if we do keep seeing a request for this sort of thing, um, it is something that will uh, move up the priority list for thinking about. Um, in ways that do it's you wanna, possible. Do you want to just briefly speak to why we don't want to let people uh, just randomly resize the window to whatever they want? Well, there are some considerations around the actual like mechanics of the game um, with the monsters, where they spawn and how quickly they move. And there are certain... Uh, you can, if you, if you were able to freely move it around, there are positions you can move it into that would break that. Um, and you could end up with monsters, for example, spawning past... Uh, the, the formation line um, based on the way the game currently scales uh, so it doesn't actually support scaling pat down below 720p right now um things get yeah like i say things get too close together um and i i mean i haven't actually because we don't actually let that that free we don't let you do a free resize um, we haven't tried exactly how that would work out but we'd have to adjust the way it's scaled um, and then things would get pretty Things could get pretty ugly uh, pretty quickly beyond that, especially for the UI, um, because a lot of the UI elements don't support being scaled lower than a certain amount as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like to the point where the text would be overflowing the boxes and icons would be crushed down to nothing, and it would be a real um, unplayable mess, which we really want to avoid uh, being something the game would get into that state. Um, but it is possible that we could make it so that you were within a certain range, you'd be able to do it. Um, that said, I do think for now the best way to do it is just to set your own custom mode, because um, that way at least you know you've gone out of your way to make it. Uh, you know, you, you've gone out of your way to change things um, that are outside of, of what we flagged as as, as functioning. 
because um, it can definitely get into a state that wouldn't be uh, what we would consider to be functioning. <laughs> yes, and like you say, it hasn't it hasn't been uh, heavily tested uh, outside of those sort of main ratios. Uh, for example, yeah. Henry here, Henry Lonwin says in chat, if you resize it to 48 to a 48 by nine ratio, you can see the background parties behind the background image. I imagine you can also see um, a bunch of the like Unity skybox in there because I think we only draw <laughs> a certain amount of backgrounds uh, as well. And I could see, you know, if you if you crush it too high, um, you know, you don't have any space for the formation. And it's another one of those issues, right, where we don't want to let players do things that they're going to regret doing. <laughs> and uh, and I think making the game unplayable is certainly one of those things. Yeah, we want to avoid the game getting into a broken state. <laughs> yeah. OK. Do do do. Well, let's hear one. There's one. There's a tough one for you, Justin. Mm -hmm. um, this one's from uh, not General Garawar, but Design Garawar. Uh, <laughs> he asks, uh, any ETA on when we'll start seeing champion updates? It's been over a year since we've really had anything other than bug fixes. Yeah, this is this is a real challenge. We get this one. We get this question every week as well. Uh, so I figured I would address it this week as well for anyone who wasn't around last week and who won't be around uh, next in the next show. Um, <clears throat> yeah, champion updates, big balance updates is something that we we want to be doing more of. It's just a matter of resourcing at this point. Um, my time is is really the limiter there. So if you want to blame uh, someone for there not being champion updates, I'm the one to throw under that bus. Um, don't don't get mad at Peter or Dupuy or uh, or Todd or anyone like that. Uh, they don't have any say on that. I'm the one holding it up. Um, we I, I really want to be doing more, but it's it's uh, it's yeah it's a matter of where where my time gets allocated out. And right now it's getting allocated to to new features. Um, and obviously new champions, and uh, and then some other stuff in the company that is uh, unrelated to idle champions in general. Um, so it is it is something we do want to be doing more of. It's it's just a matter of uh, of making making time for it in my very limited time. And I think once once we get through this um, this this major update that we're kind of working on right now, I think uh, some of my time will free up a little bit for that. Um, as long as I'm able to kind of design and balance the, the event champions moving forward at a, at a relatively good tick. So hopefully towards the end of the year, we can do, we can do a nice big uh, champion update, um, maybe even some blessings. Who knows? Actually, that's actually the next question. <laughs> it's asking about blessings. So I may as well just answer that while I'm talking is, yeah. Go right uh, into it. Blessings, uh, I guess it's a cryo, da cryo to cry. Uh, asks if we're getting more blessings uh, when they will be added. Um, we mentioned them last show and the show prior. That's true. Uh, so uh, I, I'm going to talk to. I'm actually going to highlight this one. I'll talk to Dupuy about where we can where we can fit those in. Because as I've said before, we do have more blessings that have been designed, um, and I think I'm, I'm not sure if they've been implemented yet. But I know they've certainly been designed, and uh, and it's just about finding an update to put them in at this point. Uh, whereas the champion updates have not been designed, and so it's it's uh, it's on my plate. The blessings are actually on someone else's plate, so I can go bug those people uh, and try and get you guys some blessings uh, in the next in one of the next couple updates. I mean, obviously we run we run a few, uh, ideally a couple of months ahead, um, more often than not uh, three to four weeks ahead. Um, so we'll have to find an update uh, in the future where we can fit those in. This one here, we can just put in purple. Is that 12 Boop. there? <laughs> do we know if that's, do we have an answer? For that? Yeah, that's that's one of them. Okay, okay. Yeah. I was looking at that, when they asked the question, I was like, I, th I think so. Um, well, let me so ask, let me ask you, Dave. Uh, here's a question here from General uh, Jahe Leroy. Jahe, Jahe Leroy, I don't know. Is Leroy uh, a general this... yet? I don't know. I mean, I know Garwar is a general, but uh, Leroy, I don't know. I don't know this Everyone's person. a general. You get a general, you get a general. Uh, anyway, they ask, uh, will there be a French translation of the game? And the answer is, as far as I know, French is on the list. Except that when our... that, as soon as I saw that question, the list, because I, I, I forgot exactly what items are, or what languages are on that list. I think French is on there. I'm pretty sure. Is. Yeah, I, I'm pretty confident. It's a pretty big language. But I didn't want to promise it if it wasn't on the list. But it wouldn't make it's, sense for it not to be on the list. We speak it here in Canada. 
Oh, some and, people. Uh, well, well, parts of I Canada. don't speak it. If I <laughs> spoke it, uh, anyone here who actually speaks French would just immediately leave the stream. So we're not going to do that. It's best. It's for the best. <laughs> Maybe that's a reason we could be canceled. <laughs> I speak French. <laughs> uh, Canadian culture you people will show up and be like, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> don't do that anymore. Not in public. Anyway, <laughs> uh, here's, a, here's a question for you, Dave. Uh, we'll just do uh, from Terminathor. Uh, asks, is it possible to have the possibility of disabling the view of the champion slots we don't want to use? And this person just started playing several weeks ago. Welcome. So this question actually always reminds me of uh, a story from Bushwhacker. Mm. Um, and that is that uh, we had a we had a, a trinket in Bushwhacker, which is an item that affects your character in Bushwhacker. <laughs> um, I know this one. And this trinket um, was a play on uh, Lord of the Rings. And it was the one ring trinket. And as you can probably guess, the one ring trinket makes your character invisible. And we had not one, but a rash of players who had done this. They'd put the trinket on and then they'd gone away and come back a week later and then sent a bug report in that their player was not on the screen anymore. They couldn't find them. <laughs> and I feel like the theme of today's stream is we're I, trying to stop you from doing things that make uh, life more difficult for you and for us um, and for Sean. Um, but uh, the reason, uh, one of the distinct reasons why we uh, don't make it so that you can remove slots from the bench that you're not looking at is because inevitably uh, you won't know which ones you've removed and a champion will be missing and we will get reports. Um, because people will have lost their slots. Uh, so uh, on a, it was a very dis distinct or as a very specific design goal, we, we did not uh, include that feature, even though it has been requested um, because mm -hmm. uh, inevitably someone will do it, go away, come back and wonder um, what is going on. Uh, and so we do, um, we do have limited support, unfortunately, um, ours, and that means that uh, we, we go out of our way to make sure things, uh, we don't end up with confusing situations. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I do enjoy the, the, the one ring <laughs> issue. That, yeah. So it's always like, really? Wow. Well, I, think, I think even I did that one time because, <laughs> you know, every once in a while, you know, you get some graphics that don't load and you're like, ah, darn it, I got to clear my cache or whatever. And then it's like, oh, no, wait, it's because I left yeah. myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In hindsight, in that particular design case, I feel like we should have just made it really, really like transparent, you know, really transparent, yeah, like alpha of like 10 percent or something. Or like yeah. after after you wear it for like uh, 15 or 30 seconds, a bunch of like Nazgul show up and chase you around. And then we get sued by the estate of J.R.L. Tolkien. <laughs> I don't want that at all. OK, maybe too much. Uh, OK. Um, Next question. Um, another one from Ironuck. Am I saying that right? Um, asking, do character stats affect anything, um, example damage, other than qualifying for variants? Yeah. So this is uh, this is also a question I think I've answered before on the stream, but I'm happy to answer it as many times as it's asked because it's a super simple answer. Is uh, no, they don't affect damage uh, or health or or evasion or anything like that. They are purely for qualifying for variants, qualifying for patrons, uh, and qualifying for um, any other any other buffs or blessings or anything that affect based on those stats. So um, yeah, that's that's all they're for. Uh, that's why there are some, um, any of the feats and stuff that increase or decrease them, I think just increase, um, are just so you can qualify those champions for other abilities or uh, variants. Doesn't or that um, certain variants have like uh, saving throws? That so is true. The, 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 some variants yeah. do have saving throws. Uh, some boss monsters encounters do have saving throws so you can avoid being stunned. In general, we don't lean super heavily into those. Um, if we lean too heavily into those, what happens is um, they tend to just act like a more annoying restriction. So if we say like, hey, if you, you'll get stunned and you have a saving throw if your you know, charisma is higher than 16, it's essentially just like doing a really, really annoying adventure, um, which is not annoying at all if you just use all champions with 16 plus charisma. So yeah, it's, uh, we try to use those pretty sparingly. Chris likes them though. 
well, there's just there's only so many different things you can do for the variants, right? So trying exactly. to come up with unique things every time is, is definitely difficult. That's a big challenge. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got a question here for Dave. That's uh, from Knockout Panda. And they ask, uh, any champion screen? Let me just read it quickly here so I can see what they're asking. Uh, oh, they're asking, OK. Uh, they're asking, can we add like a champion screen UI so that newer players can share their champion list more easily? without going to a third-party site. Yeah, so this is one that actually sort of ties back to a question that was asked last time and um, something that I, I think that um, would be nice for us to do, and that is not, not necessarily an in-game screen like this, but actually having a first-party uh, site option that can show this sort of stuff. Um, and I know, as I mentioned before, we've got at least one of the developers who's pretty keen to put something like that together um, so that people uh, could see that sort of thing without uh, having to um, give their credentials to a third party site, which is, is not something that we, uh, we recommend in any way, shape or form. So it's on the list to do something like that. No promises for a timeline, but I, I think we definitely have people in, internally who'd like to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question from Cassius335. Uh, can 10 seconds or so be added to Sleece's ultimate so that if you have a familiar on said ultimate, Sleece will attack twice in between switches? Uh, yeah, I, I saw this question here. I'm like, that is something that I should look at um, <laughs> because ideally, uh, yeah, Sleece shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be switching in a, in a time that is um, uncomfortable. Um, like she's switching like just before her, her base attack cooldown comes up. So I'm going to double check um what the base attack time is and the cooldown or the ultimate attack time or yeah cooldown time is and uh and try and find something that feels a little bit better the only challenge there of course is that you can have um you can have blessings and perks and uh champion abilities that decrease the cooldown uh, the base attack cooldown and the ultimate attack cooldown for that matter so um depending on your sort of setup i may not be able to find a nice um sort of middle ground that works uh, I, mean, I guess I guess one option would be to have her ultimate attack cooldown linked to her base attack cooldown, so it's always like two times her base attack cooldown plus a thing or something like that. But that might be confusing if it doesn't go down when you um, when you get blessings and perks and whatnot that decrease ultimate time. Anyway, I'm just sort of <laughs> I'm doing my design thing out loud now, so. Uh, that is something that I've highlighted here to take a look at. So thank you for that, Cassius. And, uh, and we'll take a look and report back next week. All right. Why don't we carry on with that then with uh, this question from Mezd U... Oh, no. no Mezd Uvail. Um, have you ever considered increasing the base speed of the game? Uh, sometimes it is painfully slow. Yeah, I get you there. I think sometimes uh, the dev team gets into the... Uh, gets into the habit of just running it with speed potions on pretty much all the time because we're always trying to test like okay if we go like five levels how does this thing work or whatever so um yeah i think that's uh, i mentioned earlier in the in today's stream that we were going to look at um potentially uh making the early game a little bit more um streamlined for new players to get into the into the stuff that's that's really cool uh, and so maybe that's something that we can we can include in that analysis and see if there's uh see if maybe we just need to sl slap a, a small speed potion on everyone's account for uh <laughs> for a little while at the beginning there uh let's see here we've got some questions for you dave uh here's one here from odin's beardy <laughs> uh asks when you start using the multi-party adventuring does that double the amount of event items like dragon claws that you get Ooh, this is an easy one Oh yeah, that's that's like one I would highlight. That's, that's, a, that's a freebie. Uh, the answer is no, and the main reason is because it would uh, greatly affect the completion balance uh, of the event. So, um, so the answer is uh, that those those tokens are given out um, at a fairly set rate of um, one token per thirty seconds, two tokens a minute. I think it's I think it's oh, down to one oh, every twenty five seconds right, as of year it. three. Um, yeah. or year four. No, yeah. no, you're right. I remember that now. Um, yeah. Yes. So one token every 20, every 25 seconds, um, which lets us balance um, the rate at which progression occurs during the event. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And that would get even worse if you got more with a third party and then a fourth party. And then, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, that would not be good for the balance. <laughs> and that's why we don't do it. All right. Here we have a discussion question. There, mm -hmm. This uh, player, Mike Baldi, is looking to find if we have any updates on the new multiplayer feature that we are working on, as well as the legendary item progression. Mm. Well, that is a great question. I have a very cheeky answer. No, we have not given any <laughs> updates on that. <laughs> not have we given any updates. Do we have any? Oh, we do we have give? any updates on that? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, it's coming along pretty well. I think we've done, uh, we've now in the office run a couple of, uh, of co-op campaigns and it's been, uh, uh, let's say working. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it's coming along pretty well. We're hoping to get, get it out to you guys uh, in the next uh, couple of months, um, I think, hopefully. I think we're actually we've got a build block coming up very very shortly, but um, I don't know if we're really quite ready to talk. We should probably you know what we should do we should just highlight this one and talk to uh, talk to marketing and see if we can figure out what we can talk about with that. Um, sure, maybe next week. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. I think um, I think we I think players are gonna gonna have some fun with it. It'll be a very interesting way to to spend your weeks. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any sort of thoughts on things you want to talk about in that? For that, no. I mean, I, I think it's been a it's been an all hands on deck for that one recently, and it's getting towards the point where it's more testing than than design work. So, mm -hmm. I know I did more dialogues in the last week than I had intended to, but uh, <laughs> they came on many dialogues. That's true. Yep. yep. Um, but they're all super awesome now, and if they're not. We can blame me, I guess. Blame Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk to I'll talk to marketing. We'll start. We need to start to figure out sort of how we're going to start talking about that. And I think it could be pretty cool to uh, to maybe initially release some information about that on this stream for all you guys who come and and show up and and watch us and ask questions. I think that'd be really nice. Great, you can hear it here first. Mm-hmm. So keep on coming back, <laughs> or else you might miss it. This is why Chris gives out spoilers when he ever goes on stream. It is. Uh, I just that want warm, you to fuzzy like me. feelings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, right. Let's see here. Here's another one for for you, Dave. I'll do this one here. Um, from Os Osog Pain, or Oso G Pain, or something like that. Uh, they ask, any tips to improve game network response? I seem to have a regular issue with the game not being able to contact the server, which requires closing and relaunching the game. Yeah, so this is a this can be a tricky one to track down uh, sometimes. Um, in, in general, I mean, we've got our we we keep a very close eye on uh, on the servers, and so uh, as of lately, they've been really um, well because we put so many additional up um they've been quite lightly loaded uh, which has been nice uh, which means that people shouldn't be experiencing network uh, network latency on on our end um so it does mean it's more likely something between you and getting to us um and there's not an awful lot you can do if it's between say your isp and us uh, but if it's something potentially at your inter internally at your home network um you could certainly see if there's a difference between running on if you if I mean if you're lucky enough to have more than one machine you can try on trying it on a different machine seeing if there's a difference there can at least point you in the direction of hey there might be something with the configuration on the machine you're currently using um, if you're using wireless certainly if you have the option to switch to wired that can make a difference and uh, we have seen in the past issues with particular uh, antivirus programs or internet security programs uh, mm -hmm. specifically that have uh, have had a tendency to uh, slow down. Uh, network calls as they go through or flag some calls as as um i think we had trouble once we're getting getting caught and they're not they weren't getting transmitted and that was required uh, resulting in like a re-request um and so can you remember justin what it was was it malware anti-bytes was that the one that was being difficult um i don't think it was malware uh, i thought it was like um maybe g or something like that it could have been yeah um anyway one so one option there is is if um if if you're willing to you could temporarily turn that off and see if it changes uh, the performance and if it does then um then it gives you a route to to explore there to see if maybe there's exceptions you could put into that if you're running a, a virus or a, an internet security product of some sort because that certainly can come up um yeah beyond that i'm not um 
Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what else could be suggested there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure either. Well, hopefully one of those helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can probably go to 24 here, and I've highlighted a couple more down here as you were answering mm -hmm. that one. Okay. Uh, question 24 is from Tara underscore underscore I. Cool. Um, will there be an easier way to get equipment for event champions in the future? Um, so we're not at this point planning uh, anything additional. We, we've, we've done quite a bit of work on that in the last little while. Um, like we opened time gates and time gates ups, time gates. Uh, we include, we increased the number of chests you get from them from two gold chests up to three gold chests. And we added the silver chests that you get for going every hundred areas in free play or in any of the adventures, um, which I think really helped. We've also changed the, um, the chests that you get from, from watching our streams to the um, Electrum chests, which make it quite a bit easier to get, um, get equipment, at least up to rare for event champions. And then of course, yeah, patron chests um, are another way to, to gear up your champions just for that are vi viable for that champion or for that patron. And, um, and weekend uh, chest as well. If you're signed up for the newsletter every week, you'll get a, a weekend chest, which has uh, equipment for five different champions in them. Normally, I think it's three event champions and, and two core, though it might be four event and one core these days. I'm not sure. Um, so I think there's a lot of ways to, to actually get equipment for event champions. Um, and so I don't think we're going, to, we're going to be adjusting that in any sort of major way. Anytime in the future, we might do little sort of tweaks and stuff, but I wouldn't I wouldn't expect anything major in that regard um, in the next little while. Do you want to answer this one here? Thirty-seven. Uh, I see you highlighted I'm that there, one. I'm going there. Sure. Okay. Uh, here's a question from Rob Helford, uh, who asks: Your game eats one gigabyte of RAM. Can you reduce it to five hundred megabytes at least? No. <laughs> and here's a question from uh, yeah uh, a little bit of context on that uh, unity by itself uses like 300 when you launch it empty so uh 500 is uh is not a viable um it's not a target that that it makes any sense um we, we could maybe we could reduce the resolution while we're doing the resolution stuff we can add a 640 by 480 option <laughs> no. Um, so a little bit more context on that actually is that the, the 2D graphics that the game uses, which is, is quite a bit of sprite sheet, uh, um, quite a bit of graphics that are on sprite sheets. And we're talking about uh, dozens of animated character pieces on sheets that are looking at something like 2048 by 2048. And when we pull these into the game, actually, uh, normally if you're using like a 3D game, for example, the textures get compressed and they get compressed in a way that does reduce them in size and uh, quite a bit, um, but when you you don't actually see the the little details on them the way you see something like in the, in a, a piece of 2D art, and so when we use the built-in compression, it actually destroys the way the art looks. And so the when the graphics are loaded in, they're actually loaded uncompressed, which means that you know, I think it, a 2048 by 2048 sheet comes in at something like 40 megs, I want to say, uncompressed in RAM, mm -hmm. um, and so. Uh, just to get the, the, the graphic sheets loaded um, for even just the UI and the base characters ends up taking a couple hundred megs and then every monster and every other piece of UI and every like the whole thing uh, ends up getting growing quite rapidly. Um, so while you might think that actually that's a, a having a, you know the game using a, a gig to start or around there is is um, is unreasonable. It's actually for the for the assets that it's loading. Yeah, especially the backgrounds. The backgrounds are really uh, quite mm -hmm. large graphic uh, graphical assets. Um, that that it's actually about what you'd expect it to use. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean when you when you think about it, kind of like over the past. I mean I've been playing video games for. 30 something years now and uh, you know they used to fit on my old 386 with uh, <laughs> with four megs of ram and whatnot and now they uh now you know it takes four megs of ram to like type in a, a character into the calculator app um, but it's not because you know developers have gotten super lazy and stuff i mean to a certain extent maybe hey. but uh, <laughs> but i think it's it's mainly just because the resolutions have gotten so much higher like 4k uh is is a great resolution but you know that's a lot more pixels, and every single one of those pixels takes you know three or four bytes of RAM to uh, to to represent, and so it's just it's it's not that uh, yeah, let that me just these do programs it. are just inefficient. It's it's that we like the graphics are just so much bigger these days, and that 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 qualifies for 
you know, it's like, why, why is the, the Call of Duty install like 160 gigs? It's because they've got, like, <laughs> they've got one gig of, of models and, and code and 159 gigs of textures. And uh, as, a, as a 2D game, like we are, we are also very We're texture, all texture. It's all texture all are, the time. It's 100% textures. It's a bunch yeah. of pieces of textures being drawn in your screen. You know, we don't even get, uh, we don't get free, uh, free pixels from, from stretching things out in 3D. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of why that is. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're running uh, right up towards three o'clock. Oh my! We are, oh. we are getting very close. Wow! I, I actually can't believe it's been an hour. <laughs> I totally lost track of the time. Um, yeah. Shoot. So I've got I've got uh, I've got another question. Actually, I've got two other questions here that I would I would like to squeeze in before. Right, let's uh, do it then. For the end here. Which one do you want? They're, they're pretty straightforward. They're the ones I've underlined here. 38 All right. And Thirty-nine. Thirty-eight. Uh, design question from Zanfner asks: uh, Could we one day see a feat to reduce the stat point by one or two? For the same reason to have certain champs qualify for the odd variant. Yeah, I think that's actually something we could very well see. Um, it's something I'm, I'm often thinking that I would like to do, but I just haven't uh, found the right champions to do that with. Um, so that's definitely a yes. That's something we could potentially see in the future. See one day. Okay. Then, uh, yeah. Next question from Last Crave. Question, yeah. <laughs> Crave more, no, Craven more blood. Craven more blood. Hmm. Okay. Uh, how about adding something on the map screen to show the champions without having to be in an adventure? Yeah, so this is actually, I mean, this is kind of also a bit of a tech question because the reason we don't show that stuff there is while you're on the, it's actually related to the last question too that you answered. While you're on the, uh, the campaign map there, we actually try not to have anything else in the game loaded because the campaign map is enormous. And so we actually, before you even, um, or I guess when you, when you go to the campaign map, um, if you're not in an adventure, we actually unload all of your, your champion data and all of your, um, your other data. And so uh, half the time you're there, um, we don't actually have that data loaded up. But I actually, the reason I underlined this uh, and wanted to answer is because uh, Peter and I were actually having a discussion yesterday about how we, we kind of need to start to, to bring some data in there and how it's going to be a bit of a, a, bit of a slog to get that to work properly. But um, for the, the new feature, that we, the new co-op feature that we have coming up, um, it would be very useful to have at least some of that information there. So it is something that we could start to move towards. Um, it's just the reason we don't have it now is because uh, right now when you're on the map screen and not on an adventure, um, there's, we, we don't have that data loaded. loaded. Yep. It's not there. The client has no idea what champions you have, no <laughs> ideas what blessings you have, none of that stuff. So. Uh, that's why it's not there right now, but it is something we are working on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and sort of as an addendum to the question about the RAM above, one one thing is for as you mentioned uh, about earlier about the uh, iOS devices having almost no memory. That is mm -hmm. something that we have actually spent a substantial amount of time working on, uh, trying to get everything as small as possible. Because mm -hmm. without that, um, the game does actually just get uh, uh, to toppled by iOS. iOS says, "Nope, you're done. You've had too much." Um, yeah ios man they keep on they, they keep on bumping up the resolution of their phones while not giving us any more ram to work with yeah, I, I my guess is the new so ones are, are much much higher than that and even on the new ipad pro they actually show you the amount of ram that comes with it now because they're kind of put mm. it push it towards more like a laptop style, style thing so ah. uh, anyway uh we have almost no time left and we've got quite a few questions here that i think are actually going to make it into next week's show I think so too. yeah there's a lot of good ones this week we have a next week's show, Justin. We actually, we actually don't have a next week's show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me just scroll down here to the, uh, to the, yeah, to the outro. All right. Um, well. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, if we, uh, if we didn't get to your question this week, don't worry. You'll have another opportunity. Um, we'll pull some of these questions from from this week into the beginning of our next show, and of course, we will be back. Um, we actually won't be back next week because I will be off for my daughter's first birthday. Uh, but uh, we'll be live again at the same time in two weeks. Um, and before we sign off, we'd like to thank our tireless mods. Uh, I believe today Sasha was modding. So was. thank you very much, Sasha. And of course, we want to thank all of you for hanging out, watching the stream, enjoying the game, and asking us all these wonderful questions. Uh, without you, no one here would get to do what we do. And we like what we do. Um, that's true. Absolutely, we do. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, that is enough of that. And... Um, yeah. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone. I saw Peter behind you.